what was it like finally walking out of that hospital after the ordeal you both had been through? Um, I, emotions hit me every single time that, it, that this comes up. Um, it was the most empowering experience of my life. Um, definitely the most emotional. Uh, when I was going through therapy, um, I even cried because I wanted to walk out of this hospital. I did not want to be wheeled out. And they didn't have a lot of faith in the, in the concept of walking out because I was so just physically drained and distraught. Um, he had lost I 50 lost, pounds. Yes, I lost 50 pounds mm -hmm. um, coming out of there. So I went in at 197, I came out at 147. And so we wheeled out um, when the elevator door opened there was people lining the hallways and in cheering. And I was thinking to myself, who's taking care of the patients? <laughs> so it was just, a, you know, I, I noticed over on the side that all of my doctors were right there and I fist bumped each one of them. And then I just had, oh God, I cry every time I see it, say this. I just had this empowering endorphins that were pumping through my body. And I looked up at, at Stephanie and AJ and I just said, grab an arm. And I stood up and I walked out on my own. It was so incredible. I walked out to over a hundred of my friends and family with signs that said, the slopes are calling. Oh, it was so incredible. <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. And as I see you two sitting there, AJ, I just want to say that his recovery had a lot, a lot to do with the doctors and he worked hard, of course, but your support, I don't think you realize how instrumental you've been in his recovery process. AJ, mm -hmm. did you ever test positive for COVID? Because I you were, yeah. I never have. I was just really, really careful. And, and even when I went into the hospital, I was that much more careful because obviously we didn't know the extreme or the, the extent of, of what it was and the, con the contagious side of things. So yeah, I was just really, really careful. Well, Greg, uh, we know you are the consummate survivor and fighter so you made a pact with yourself i guess that you were going to hit those slopes again did you ever make it back to the slopes to ski you got that right sure so did <laughs> i made a commitment to my doctors my nurses and our village and uh again crying again um december 11th it was the kickoff and um, I can't hold a pole in my right hand, but I was 100% back on and I didn't miss a beat. There are a lot of people out there who say, oh, the virus isn't real. Or if, even if they do believe that the virus is real, they say it won't happen to me. Or they just, for whatever reason, don't mm -hmm. choose to take it seriously. What would you tell them? Look at my hands. <laughs> is this serious? Now, again, this has been a very life-changing situation, but... Fortunately, I, I'm of the mindset that it's not going to change my life. We keep our vibrations high and there's not a day that goes by that I don't talk to somebody that's in the hospital or talk to a family member that has somebody in the hospital that uh, I, I give hope to, that I, you can be on the other side of this. At the same time, it's also Russian roulette and it's, it's not a game anyone wants to play. And Greg's that perfect example of it just happened to him. And we've, we've run across many people that it just happened to also. And granted, there's a lot of cases that are mild, but if you're not that one to get the mild case, it's a totally different story. Look out. 